I know that you've been focused on this in a big way, the difference between PCE and CPI. What's your reader thinks? Yeah, um, well, well, maybe just, just to, to start off by talking to what you guys were, were just focused on. You know, I, I think that um, one of the key questions is how much additional improvements, supply side improvements, can we get? Um, and this gets back to how much additional normalization post pandemic uh, should we expect? Um, and, and where will the economy be? What is the underlying trend in inflation once all of those pandemic related effects fade? And we, we don't don't know that yet. We can try to estimate it, um, but we, we're not really sure what it is, and we're still kind of waiting to see that. Um, and, and actually, in our minds, that plus the fact that demand in the U.S. economy still looks pretty strong might be enough to keep the Fed on hold for a little bit longer than maybe the markets were pricing. Um, you know, and then there's the other issue of this core CPI versus PCE. You know, as you guys suggested, uh, the, the measures are calculated differently. CPI doesn't look as good. We're at 4% still uh, on a year over year basis, even though we've gotten down into that two point something range with PCE. There's a lot of non market factors, uh, non market prices that go into the PCE, um, as Michael McKee sort of suggested. And those are the things that are kind of contributing to the good news. So the Fed's kind of just getting lucky, frankly, on the PCE. We think the optics of the CPI, plus the fact that demand just continues to look so strong, uh, probably will keep the Fed uh, on hold a little bit longer here. And in December, uh, Jay Powell didn't seem to push back against market pricing, didn't seem to push back against this idea, seemed to frankly embrace the idea of a soft landing. Why do you think that's going to change and they're going to be less likely to cut rates in March, given that if you look at a year over year comp, at least in the past six months, you are seeing it back in that 2% range. And a lot of people are saying, you've got it. You could take a victory lap, as we were just hearing from Bob Michael. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly their preferred inflation measure is definitely going to give them cover if they did want to hike rate or excuse me, if they did want to cut rates uh, in March. We think it's going to be running at 2.7. They're going to be pretty sure it's running at 2.7. That February data, um, you know, that 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 we'll get right around that a little after the meeting, but we'll probably know the, the details of it. So there definitely is cover for them to start to cut. You know, and I think one of the questions here is so so we've done some historical analysis analysis on central banks and when they tend to cut. And it basically suggests that central banks always tend to be too late. <laughs> and they're not really cutting until their economies are already in recession and unemployment rates are up. So if no, maybe knowing this kind of historical analysis, you know, the Federal Reserve, instead of that kind of behavioral, um, you know, historical way, they want to actually push against that and say, you know what, maybe we're going to get going now, but we're going to go really slowly. You know, it's certainly possible that they could do that. And I think Waller suggested that um, kind of more recently. So we definitely wouldn't rule out March. It's a live meeting. Um, you know, I guess just for us, the balance of, of risks, you know, still um, it's become more balanced, but maybe still is a little bit more on the side of, of inflation risks reaccelerating, um, you know, which suggests to us that maybe mid year, a mid year cut is more reasonable. And by the way, that's what we think is in line with the median for when we look at the summary of economic projections from Fed officials.